Code Please. Welcome to Code Please. In this channel, I try to teach you a little bit about computer programming using the Elixir language. If you find this content useful, please consider subscribing and sharing with your friends. Now let's get into today's video. Hello. In this video, we continue our exploration of data manipulation by looking at some common operations using collections or enumerables. An enumerable in Elixir is any data type that implements the enumerable protocol. Lists, maps, and ranges are common data types used as enumerables in Elixir. Let's take a look at some common operations that take enumerables as arguments, starting with functions that are specific to the manipulation of lists and Elixir. Here we have a list comprised of a bunch of strings and another list inside of one of the elements. Some operations that we can perform in lists include getting the first element, getting the last element, deleting one of the elements in the list. Let's say we want to delete the cat from the list. Get rid of the cat. Another frequent operation that we use with the lists is to flatten all the elements inside the list. If you notice, we have one element that is actually another list. And if we want to flatten the hierarchy of these lists, we can just simply flatten animals and we get a flat list with the internal element that is a list converted into two elements of this list. Now let's explore functions that are specific to map manipulation. Starting with this beautiful map I have here, uh, one thing we could do is fetch some data from the map. So if I do map.get entities and I want to retrieve only the animals, for instance, I could do this. I could also use, as we've seen before, directly our dot syntax because animals in this case is an atom. So Elixir also allows for this. I could also use another function called fetch and fetch is basically the same as get but it will complain if the key doesn't exist so if I use this I still get animals but say I want to get lists it will complain that it it's not found it will basically raise an error while if I do the same but using get uh, I will not it will not retrieve it will not give me an error, it will just return nil, meaning that it did, it did not find it. I do with this one and I get nil. Another thing we can do is basically drop one of the keys from this map. So we can say drop roots. I believe this gets a list of keys to drop. So I just removed the uh, roots key from this map. Um, we can also use uh, take, like we've seen before in another episode. And if we do take, we just retrieve that particular set of keys or list of keys that we pass as the list. We can also merge two maps. So let's say I want to merge entities with a whole new map that contains who bar. I get the exact same entities map that I had but with an extra key value that I just added. I can also put new keys into this map. So I can do map put entities and I can do exactly the same as did as I did before but with a, in a different way. So I still get the full bar in there. I'm just adding a key instead of merging with another map. It's essentially the same. We can check if a map has a, a certain key in it, it has key, and we can ask if it has the key animals, and it does. And if we try to do the same with uh, lists, it's false. So oh, that key, that map doesn't have the key uh, lists. We can also retrieve a, a a list of all the values in this map by using map dot values, and this will ret return a list where you just get basically the values. It just gets rid of all the keys and uh, yeah, it just returns a list of this and this and this 
than this. And we can also do the same for keys, so we could get a list of the keys on this map. And this time I get all the atoms that are composing, uh, that are the keys, basically. Finally, I also have the ability to delete a certain key from the map. Type, let's delete the animals. And then we get the map, but without the animals. Okay, so you might have noticed that we are missing some capabilities that might be interesting. Like the ability to, for instance, reverse a list or fil filter out some of its members based on some criteria or even check if a list is empty. That's what the enum module is for. It provides facilities that are common to all enumerables. Let's take a look at some of the most common functions in the enum module. Okay, just so we don't forget, uh, I re-added the animals and entities list and maps uh, to this live book. And now we're going to perform some common operations using the enum module. So if we want to say, if, for instance, if um, cat is a member of animals, we could use the member function, member question mark. And we should get true. There's also a couple of very um, useful functions named filter and reject. And this allows us to filter an enumerable based on a certain criteria. So for instance, let's say we want to filter our animals based on a function that asks whether it's a list. And we only get one element because there's only one element in that list that is actually a list, which is the giraffe ele elephant. But we could also do like costume checks. So I could just get the element in an anonymous function. And then I could say, okay, is element equals equal to the lion, for instance. Syntax is a little bit different. That was a short uh, syntax, but I can also filter um, like this. And if I do the opposite, which is reject, I can just reject the lion. And then I get all the elements of the lion. We can have a bit more complex examples, like for instance, if we want to filter out from a list of uh, numbers, or better yet, let's use ranges. We do 1 to 10, and let's say we want to get only the elements that are odd. So, one way we could do that is by getting the remainder of the division of the element by 2, and if this is 0, it means the uh, the element is even and let's filter out for the even elements and we get all the even elements from 1 to 10 that's pretty cool another thing we can do uh, with enumerables is for instance return with index is sometimes helpful when we need to do something with the position of the index in the list for instance so let's take our animals and let's return a new list that contains the element and its position in the list. So dog is in position zero, cat is position one, etc. etc. This is very useful as well sometimes. Another thing we can do, and we already explored this in past videos, is doing a map when we want to do some data transformations, for instance. And <clears throat> let's say we want to return a new list where we don't really care about the element. So let's put it in under K in uh, um underscore and let's just return the keyword foobar for all of the elements. And if we do this, we just re return basically a list with the same size of, uh, of the animals list, but with all elements replaced by foobar. Map is good for transformations of data, and we could do any arbitrary kind of transformation depending on the inline function that we pass here. Another thing that we can do is use the function uh, join, for instance, to uh, join an enumerable into a string. So let's say we have I Pedro. If I do an unjoin of this base character, where I get this a string, my name is Pedro, and if I replace it else, I would get basically all the, ele the elements concatenated together with this um, character that I specify, or with this string that I specify. It doesn't have to be a character. I could do easily this, and I would get the same kind of result. Another thing we can do is check if an enumerable is empty with the empty function. 
we ask if animals is empty, it's not. If we ask if empty list is empty, then it is empty. Another useful function that we can use is the reduce function. And this allows us to basically convert an enumerable into a single value in the end. So let's say we have a range of 1 to 10, and we want to sum up these values. One of them. The, the result of adding all these elements, 1 plus 2 plus 4, so one. one way we could do that is using the reduce function, which takes the enumerable, and then the starting value to start with, so 0, then a function that takes the element enumerable, and an accumulator. And the accumulator is the result that we want to return in the end. And the accumulator starts by being the initial value, which is 0, and as we iterate, we can just greater element and if we evaluate this we should 55 which is the sum of 1 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on and so forth there's another one that you can use which is map reduce and this is basically a combination of the map and reduce functions and it does two things at the same time so on one end it returns one single value but it also returns the a list of the modified elements so we could um need to change this to the tuple and on the first element of the tuple we're going to return the element so let's say we multiply the element by two and on the accumulator value we return also still the sum of all the elements and if we run this then we get a new list as the first element of the tuple where each element is multiplied by two which is the operation we're performing as part of the map operation and then we get 55, which is the sum of all those elements. We also have um, cool functions like, uh, for instance, ability sum. And this is going to give us the same as we were doing with, with the reduce, but there's facilities for this. We can also do max or in, and we can do count. We could say 10 elements in this list, but obviously elements in this list but if you want to confirm we can see animals we have in that five so the dog cat monkey the giraffe and the elephant which is technically just one element because it's a list and the lion and uh we can also return the unique elements in the list because the can be can have repetition so let's say we have one two one again and we run this to get one two because one is repeated and if we want we also which reverses our list and if we do like three we get three two one so that was a fast forward across multiple functions that elixir provides to manipulate collections as we have seen some have specialized modules depending on the type like map and list and there are others, while other functions live in more general modules, like the enum module. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and liking, and sharing with your friends. It really helps the channel to grow. Thank you.